In this video, we're going to, again, calculate work in one dimension. The problem here is you're pushing a 50 kilogram crate across a frictionless ground. You start with the crate at rest, pushing with 100 newtons, but your force decreases linearly to zero in five seconds. What does the work you do on the crate? Since I don't know immediately how to solve this, I always start with a picture so I can visualize what's going on. There's my picture. Remember, it doesn't have to be a good one. So that's me pushing this 50 kilogram crate across the ground. Now if I want to calculate work, I need to know the force on this. I'm given a description of the force, but what is that? Again, I'm going to visualize that by making a graph. So here's my force as a function of time. It starts at 100 and decreases linearly to 5. So what sort of physics can I apply to this problem? I know that I have force as a function of time, and I do know I have an expression that deals with force as a function of time, and that's this integral, where work is equal to the integral from some t initial to t final, and I have that, 0 to 5 seconds, of the force as a function of time times the velocity as a function of time. Well, I don't have a function of the force as a function of time yet, but I can certainly do that from my graph, f at t is equal to 0 is equal to 100. Well, that's just the y-intercept of this line. And so what else do I know? Well, I can calculate the slope of this line. That's just rise over run. The final y-position is a 0. The initial y-position is 100. The final x-position is 5. And the initial x-position is 0. And I'm doing sort of the traditional x versus y in math, even though I have force versus time. Calculate slope in the usual way, then gives me negative 100 over 5 or negative 20. I know my force as a function of time. What about the velocity, though? I don't have anything for the velocity as a function of time. Well, back from kinematics, I know that I can get the velocity if I know the position as a function of time, because the velocity is the derivative of the position. Well, I don't have the position as a function of time either, but I also know that I can find the velocity is the indefinite integral of the acceleration function of time. And the acceleration, I know, can be related to the force through Newton's second law, and I have only one force, so I think I might be able to find it that way. Let's give it a shot. So I've rewritten my force function here. Next, I want to find the acceleration, which is the force divided by the mass. And I was given the mass. That's 50 kilograms. So if I divide the force by 50, I get 2 minus 2 fifths t. That's great. So now I want to know the velocity, which is the indefinite integral of the acceleration, which is this simple polynomial, so that's not too bad. The indefinite integral of that is 2t minus 2 fifths t squared over 2, so the 2's cancel, and I get 1 fifth t squared plus this integration constant c. I remember how to take care of that as well, because the velocity at t is equal to 0 is just equal to c. And I was told in the original problem that the object started at rest, which meant the velocity started at 0. So that means I can just get rid of the c, and my velocity function is 2t minus 1 fifth t squared. All right, well, let's go back, and now I have everything I need to solve. I just need to substitute those functions into here. All right, to start with, let's do some algebra. I'm going to just calculate f of t times v of t. Multiplying them out, I get four terms, those two, then the inner terms, 40t squared, the outer terms, 100 times negative 1 fifth t squared gives me 20t squared, and then 4t cubed, the last terms from each. Consolidate those, the minus 40t squared minus 20t squared gives me negative 60t squared, and now I can bring that inside the integral. So now I've got an integral of a simple polynomial. I need the indefinite integral, and I've changed colors because I was getting bored. 4t cubed gives me 4t to the fourth over 4, or t4, t to the fourth. 60t squared is 60t cubed over 3, or 20t cubed. And 200t is 100t squared, evaluated between 0 and 5. So that's just substituting 5 into all of those values. And then I can calculate finally. And interestingly, I get negative 2,500 in those, which cancel, with a final work equal to 600 
and 25 joules. Now, does this make sense? Well, it's not sort of ridiculously high or low. I don't have really much to compare it to. Sometimes when I get a cancellation like that, I try to check to see if there's some sort of physical explanation for why that is, but I couldn't find anything. I think that's just a coincidence. And that's how you can find the work when you have the force and the velocity as functions of time.